Hello and welcome. So I've set my filter for my graph to just physics. In this video, we're gonna start talking about the physics option and what all these buttons over here actually mean. And it's gonna seem counterintuitive, but the first thing we should explain is this one that's the second to the last, and that's the solver. And this is probably going to be one of the ones that your users find the most useful. The solver is not really clear what it means from just its name. What it actually is, you can tell by this drop down menu, are all the different algorithms available in PyViz right now. So you have the Barnes Hut, the Force Atlas 2 based repulsion, and hierarchical repulsion. What does this mean? Well, it means that your users can very easily and very quickly change an algorithm without having to change and create a new network graph. So I can change it to force Atlas two based and we see a new algorithm taking place here. We can change it to Barnes hut and we see a dip once again, a different algorithm taking place and the same thing with repulsion and the same thing with hierarchical repulsion or H repulsion. So you can get a sense really quickly in real time for what algorithm algorithm is best for your data. So let's go through and just work through on, on this video, the Barnes hut algorithm. The Barnes-Hutt algorithm, uh, I think it was originally written about in a paper in the 1990s, uh, became gradually more popular throughout the 90s, and uh, definitely into the 2000s, it became very popular. The reason why it's popular is because it's very useful for handling big data. Data, And the reason why it's useful for handling big data is because the Barnes-Hutt algorithm takes into account not just, um, a, or it doesn't take into account all the nodes at the same time the way most network algorithms do. Instead, what it does is it uses a system called vectorization, essentially reducing the entire network graph to a series of vectors that can then be subdivided into different vectors uh, that can then be divided into different vectors beneath that. Uh, I think it's functions with eight vectors per main vector, if that makes any sense at all. But what it does is it initially assigns nodes to a specific vector and then only does the calculations for that node within that vector. And by doing that, it's able to produce a very, very complex network graph much more quickly. That's really the times that you want to use the Barnes Hut algorithm is when you are working with lots and lots of data. I'm going to have a whole other video where I explain the Barnes Hut algorithm in a lot more detail. For now, that's all you need to understand. So with the Barnes Hut algorithm, we have a few different options here. We can see the ones that are specifically tailored to the Barnes Hut algorithm because they're listed with this little gray background. You have two ways to adjust these variables. You can adjust it by using this drag here, or you can adjust it numerically by just typing in, or you can't type in here, but there we go. Nope, you can't type in there. You used to be able to. Uh, or you can just kind of uh, change this here in the actual Python script to make it equate to this very specific integer. And if you look at the PyViz documentation, you'll find that these numbers correlate specifically to, pull it up over here, they correlate specifically to the barnes hut algorithm argue parameters or arguments that you can pass. Gravity, central gravity, spring length, spring strength, dampening, and overlap. And I'll provide those in the comment or the description down below. And we see over here the gravitational constant. This is our gravity. We see central gravity. This is our central underscore gravity, spring length, spring underscore length, etc. on down the list. So what do each of these things do? Well, if you just look at your PyViz documentation, you'll see that gravi the gravitational constant or gravity, which is an integer, controls the gravity um, uh, of the actual node. Uh, the a specific value of that node. So the greater the negative value, which as we get down here, the greater repulsion that you'll see in your network graph. The uh, the lower the negative number, so getting closer to zero, the uh, the less the repulsion is, which is why we're seeing this graph kind of constrict and get closer together. This allows you to very easily kind of move nodes away from each other. It'll make your network graph, if you're working with a lot of big data and a lot of very clustered clusters, uh, to be separate them out to make it a little bit more legible for you or your users. So the next thing in our list is central gravity. Central gravity, if you can't tell from here, is a float, which means it's a decimal point. Uh, floats are different from integers. Uh, I have a whole series on uh, PyViz for Digital Humanities in which I explain this. For right now, just understand that a float is a number with a decimal point. Now, the central gravity is the gravity attractor to pull the entire network to the center. So what does that mean? Well, it means as we increase this, we're going to pull all of this, all of these nodes closer to the center of the map, meaning it's going to pull the vectors in kind of closer. 
And we can see this kind of in real time. And you don't have to understand the math to really see what's happening. You can see the changes in this graph as we simply increase this number. And it's pulling everything very clearly to the center of our network map making the network graph a little closer together, which is gonna be useful if you're trying to grab a screenshot or if you're trying to look at all the data in a very small confined space and you're not caring too much about the actual labels and the legibility and instead looking to identify larger patterns across a large sum of data. So that's what your central gravity is going to do and that's why it's gonna be useful. The next thing that we have here is the spring length. Now, like matplotlib and everything else, spring length is going to... Uh, it's going to, according to the PyVis documentation, it's going to rest length of the edges. I'm not sure what they're trying to say there, but essentially what it's going to do is it's going to increase the spring length. So it's going to increase the length of your edges in your network graph. And this is going to be, as you can tell over here, an integer. The next thing that we have is our spring constant. And in your PyVis documentation, this is going to be your spring underscore strength. And this is going to be a float. So an integer, oh, sorry, a decimal point number. Uh, and this is going to be the strength, the edges, uh, <laughs> and this is verbatim from the PyVis documentation, the strong the edges springs are. Once again, I'm not entirely sure what that's trying to say, but if you sit here and you play around with it, you'll see that it is increasing the, uh, the strength of the nodes there, the spring constant. So, or the spring strength, I apologize. So that's what that does, and you can sit there and play around with it. So... Dampening is our next thing. And again, you can tell that this is a float. In the PyVis documentation, we are told that it, dampening is a value ranging from 0 to 1 of how much of the velocity from the previous physics simulation interaction carries over to the next iteration. So essentially, when you're running physics, you're getting essentially an animation that's occurring. And oh, changing the wrong thing. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to affect how that animation kind of proceeds. Play around with it. When you turn off physics, you see nothing's happening. When you turn it on, you see that. So just play around with it. Get a sense for what works best for your data. If you want the uh, actual interaction to be animated, then you're going to want to affect this dampening so it animates differently. And again, you, as you can see, as we decrease this, get closer to zero, you're seeing this animation occur a little bit more uh frequently as you're getting closer to one you're seeing it slow down a lot and that's what's happening here it's affecting the animation of your graph so that's what that's doing the next thing that we have for the barnes hut algorithm is overlap according to the PyVis documentation overlap is when a larger uh, when a number larger than zero the size of the node is taken into account the distance will be calculated from the radius of the encompassing circle of the node for both the gravity model. The value one is maximum overlap avoidance. So if you can decipher that, I'd be happy to hear it. Go ahead. Actually, I'm going to just reset this graph so we can kind of get a sense for what's happening when I do this. So resetting it, and you see it's four-spaced atlas. We're going to change that to Barnes Hut once again, and let's do this avoidance overlap. So what you're seeing, this is a translation of what you just read there. Let's decrease or increase our dampening, slow it down a little bit, and do this. Spread it out some, and spring constant. Wrong thing, there we go. So what you're seeing here is the overlap taking into account the position of other nodes and trying to uh, affect change to keep it from actually overlapping with other nodes. That's what I can discern from all this. So once you move past this, uh, these are the custom Barnes Hut uh, parameters that you can pass. Once you get past that, you have all these ones that come standard with everything else. So what we have here is max velocity, and uh, you can see that it's not really doing too much. I've never really been able to figure out how this affects our network graph, uh, the max velocity and min velocity, and same with timestamp. Uh, time step. I'm going to find a uh, figure out what these do and post this in another video. But for right now, you can see with just the Barnes Hut algorithm how useful it can be to actually play with these very specific parameters in real time. And the one thing I haven't discussed yet is this checkbox up here physics enabled. If it's checked, it's true. If it's unchecked, it's false. It's a Boolean. The reason why you want to really become comfortable with this is because it lets you freeze a graph and drag nodes around without the physics taking place anymore. So let's say you have a cluster and you really want to get a good picture for an article of that cluster, but it's, it's just not looking right. You can actually manually bring everything in and make the graph look the exact way that you want uh, by turning off the physics and not worrying about 
the physics taking play over and moving things around. If I have the physics enabled, let me slow all this down. Hang on. There we go. Okay. If I have the physics enabled and I'm trying to get a good screenshot, if I move that, it's going to immediately pop back. Having physics disabled allows for you to actually get things right where you want them. So that's all for this video. In the next video, I'm going to go through and talk about the uh, different specific parameters to uh, some of these other ones. But as you can tell, they're all going to be very similar. With repulsion, we have a couple different unique ones like no distance. A lot of these are going to be self-explanatory, but I'll go through and explain them real fast in the next video. Now that you've got a sense of how the Barnes HUD algorithm works, you should have a good sense for how the other ones will work as well. That's all for this video, though. Thank you for listening.